Hi, my name is Paul Grogan, and in this Gaming Rules video, I'm going to be teaching you how to play the 2016 special vintage version of Vinyos, designed by Vito Lacerda and published by Eagle Griffin Games. In Vinyos, you take on the role of a Portuguese wine producer, managing your estates across the country, producing fine wine, and then promoting your label both at home and abroad. During the game, you will establish new vineyards and build wineries, hire skilled farmers and enologists, and build cellars so that your wine can mature. Sell wine to local establishments to raise funds, or ship it abroad to increase your reputation around the world. At each of the three wine tasting fairs, you will present one of your wines and gain additional prestige by impressing the judges. The competition is fierce, only the best labels will survive the test of time. The game is played over six rounds, which is tracked on the quadril at the centre of the game board. This quadril also doubles as the area where you select your actions. There are nine actions available, but it's these six spaces which track the game round. It'll become clear later on why these two things are combined into one. At the start of each round, you reveal the next vintage tile from the stack. This shows the weather for the year ahead, and also some other information which I'll explain later. Each round is split into four steps. Two action steps, followed by maintenance, and then production. At the end of rounds three, five, and six, there's a wine tasting fair. Victory points, representing your prestige, are tracked on the outside of the game board. And after final scoring has taken place, the player with the most prestige wins the game. Before I go into the detailed rules, I'm just going to explain one of the key concepts of the game, and this is the difference between wine quality and wine value. Each wine in the game is represented by one of these counters on your estate. The colour of the counter is the type of wine, either red or white, and the number on the tile is the quality. When I cover production later on, I'll explain more about how the quality of the wine is determined, but for now, the bigger the number, the better the wine. Apart from end-game scoring, the actual quality of the wine is never used during the game. Instead, it's the wine's value which is important. And the value of the wine starts off at the quality, plus any modifiers shown in a circle icon like this. For example, take this quality 2 wine here, stored in my cellar. Notice the plus 3 above the space. This icon means that the value of this wine is 3 higher. So, whenever I use this wine for selling, exporting, or presenting at the fair, it's considered to be value 5. There are two other ways to increase the value of a wine. First, whenever you sell, export, or present a wine, you may remove up to two renown cubes from the appropriate region on the game board to increase the value of the wine by one for each cube used. For example, this wine in my cellar is currently value 5, but it's from region 4. And if I look at region 4, there's three renown cubes, so I could remove two of these, and my wine is now value 7. Finally, any wine from the Algarve is always valued at an extra one higher. So, that's the difference between wine quality and wine value. Now let's have a look at the actions you can take. As mentioned earlier, there are six rounds in the game, and you get to do two actions on each round. The player order shown here determines the order of the actions that the players take, and this order can change during the game. There are nine possible action spaces that you can choose from, although you have to move your meeple from where it is, you cannot stay where you are. If you move to an adjacent space, which you will do as your first action because you start in the middle, you don't have to pay any money. But let's say my meeple was here. If I then choose to move over here, I would have to pay one money to the bank. Also, if you move to the space where the current round marker is, that cost one money too. And finally, if you move to a space with other players' meeples on it, you must pay each of them one money. For example, if I wanted to move from here to here, I would have to pay two money to the bank, one because I'm moving to a non-adjacent space, and another because I'm moving to the space where the round marker is, and I would also have to pay one money to the yellow player. Note, however, that you never pay any money when moving to the central action space, either to the bank or to the other players. 
The first action I'm going to explain is actually on two different action spaces, this one and this one. These actions are identical, but the one you choose is still important as it may cost you money to move to the space. When you choose this action, you must buy one vineyard from one or two regions. The exact vineyard you buy is whatever tile is on top of the stack. So if I wanted to buy a vineyard from region 4, it would have to be this red one. You pay the cost shown on the tile to the bank, and notice that the cost is different across the regions. You can have up to five estates, and in each estate, the vineyards must be from the same region and the same colour. So for example, if I already had an estate in region 4 producing red wine, the new vineyard I buy could start a new estate, or I could add it to my existing estate because it's red. Two vineyards in the same estate do not produce two wines. Instead, they increase the quality of the wine that that estate produces. So let's say I want to start a second estate. When you start a new estate, you place your region disc into that region on the game board. I already have a disc in region 4 for my first estate, but I place another one here to show that I now have two estates in that region. This allows all players to more easily see who has estates in which region. When you set up a new estate, you may get a bonus depending on the region. For example, a new estate in region 4 comes with a free seller. And I would only get that bonus if I started a new estate, and not if I added an extra vineyard to my existing estate. And finally, when you buy a vineyard from a region, this icon tells you to place one Renown Cube into that region. Remember that Renown Cubes can be used to increase the value of the wine. Note that in each region, there are only two red and two white vineyards in the game. So on both of my estates, I can no longer add any extra vineyards, as the only vineyards left in that region are white. This action allows you to buy one or two wineries at a cost of three each and place them into your estates. Wineries will increase the quality of the wine that that estate produces. And winery tiles are two-sided, and you use the side appropriate to the type of wine produced on your estate. So let's say I buy two wineries at a cost of six money. I could place one here and one here. Alternatively, I could place them both into the same estate. When you buy a winery, this icon tells you to place one Renown Cube into that region on the board. Which in my case means that both Renown Cubes are placed in Region 4. The combinations possible for a full estate are two vineyards and one winery, or one vineyard and two wineries. It's also possible when buying a winery to assign it to a brand new estate. This estate will not produce wine however, because it must have a vineyard to grow the grapes. And also, since the region of the estate has not yet been decided, you place your Renown Cube on the winery itself. Later in the game, when you add a vineyard to that estate, you then place the Renown Cube from the winery onto the board in the corresponding region. To buy cellars for your estates, you do so with this action. You can buy one or two cellars at the cost of three each. The cellar is added to your estate, and any wine you currently have is transferred into the cellar like so. Notice that the value of the wines increase immediately. And also notice that there are four spaces for the wine in a cellar instead of two. This will be important when I explain production. And this icon here reminds you that when you place a cellar, you put one Renown Cube into that region on the board. Like with wineries, you can actually buy a cellar and place it into a brand new estate. You place the Renown Cube on the cellar as explained earlier. Another way to increase the quality of wine that your estates produce is by hiring skilled workers, and you do so with this action. You can hire one or two workers, and each worker can either be an enologist or a farmer. Enologists cost three and work in your wineries, and farmers cost two and go to work on your vineyards. These workers can be reorganised around your estates whenever you want, but you must have space for them when you hire them. So if you don't have a winery, you cannot hire any enologists. I'll explain more about how farmers and enologists work during production. Wine experts can come in very useful, and at this action space you can hire one or two of them at the cost of one each. There are four types of experts in the game, covering the specialities of aroma, strength, appearance and taste. 
The expert tiles are stacked face up, so you always see which one you're taking. Once bought, you place it face up next to your player board. Expert tiles have two uses. The first use is for the ability actually printed on the tile itself, and these are all explained in the reference book. You can only use one of your expert tiles on each of your turns. Using an expert in this way flips the tile over, and it only flips back at the end of the first two fares. The other use of an expert tile is when you're doing a press release, and I'll explain this later on. On this action space you can sell one or two of your wines to some of the local establishments. For each wine you sell, you must place one of your barrels onto an empty slot in the sales area. You start the game with two barrels, and I'll explain how you can get more later on. Red wine has to go onto the red slot, and white onto the white. The number on the slot is the minimum value of wine needed, and it's also the amount of money you get. And remember, this is wine value that we're talking about, so you can spend renown cubes from the region to boost the value of your wine. For example, if I choose to sell this wine here, its value is normally 4 because of the plus 1 from the seller. But if I look at the region where this wine is from, there's one renown cube. So I could discard that and place my barrel on the 5 space. I discard the wine tile and take 5 money from the bank. Instead of selling your wines to the local hotels and restaurants to raise money, you can instead choose this action to ship them abroad. This action works in a very similar way to selling, although you get victory points instead of money. For each wine you export, you must place one of your barrels onto an empty slot of the export area, and the number on the slot is the minimum wine value, and you can use renown cubes as normal. So going back to my previous example, instead of selling that red wine valued 5 to a local establishment, I could instead export it here and get 5 victory points. Barrels in this area also contribute to your end game score. The central space of the quadril is special. Remember, it never costs you any money to move to this space, no matter how many other players' meeples are there. Also, if you cannot perform one of the other actions because you don't have enough money, then you must choose this action instead. This space means that you do two things. First, you move your player order marker from the top row of the track and place it onto any empty slot of the bottom track. This will set the turn order for the next action step, so if you choose this space as your first action in a round, the turn order will change before the second action. After doing that, you may then perform a press release to enter one of your wines in the upcoming fair. Note that this can be done any time in the game, not just during the round in which there is a fair. It's also important to note that when the wine fair starts, all players who haven't done a press release yet get to do so immediately before the fair. So, if you get to do it for free just before the fair starts, then why would you spend one of your valuable actions doing so sooner? Well, doing so can have advantages. You get to choose the booth slot you want at the fair, but also the sooner you impress the magnates, the earlier you will have access to additional barrels. To do a press release, choose one of your wines and calculate its value, remembering that you can spend renown cubes. So I'm going to choose this wine here, and spend one renown cube to make it value 9. Then perform the following 5 steps, which are shown on the game board here. Step 1. Earn fair points equal to the value of the wine. Note that this is fair points, not victory points, so you move your marker forward on the fair scoring track. Step 2. Choose an empty booth at the fair, and gain the bonus on that booth. The order of the booths from left to right is important for a later step, which is why the first booth has no bonus. In my example, I decide that I'm running low on cash, so I choose this booth and gain 3 money. Step 3. Use experts to gain additional fair points. Consult the current vintage tile for the round. On it, you will see two or more features of wine depicted. This tile, for example, shows red and green, which means that you can use one red and one green expert to boost your fair points. The amount of fair points you get is equal to the number of symbols depicted on the vintage tile. So a red expert used now would give three additional fair points, whilst a green expert would only give one. Thanks to my clever planning, I happen to have a face-up red expert. Note that I cannot use the blue expert, as no blue symbols were on the vintage tile. 
And also, I cannot use this green expert because it's face down. Also note that the expert that I'm planning to use has a similar symbol with a small arrow. That means that if I use it at the fair, I get one more fair point. So that's what I'm going to do. Use this red expert to gain four additional fair points. Experts used in this way are returned to the bottom of the appropriate stack. In step four, I compare the wine I presented to the expectations of the three wine magnates, Annabella, Bruno and Carolina. These requirements are shown on the current vintage tile. Annabella wants wine of a specific colour, Bruno wants wine of a minimum value, and Carolina wants wine from one of the regions depicted. In our example, I have presented a white wine of value 9 from region 7, which means I've actually met the expectations of all three wine magnates. I may now take one barrel from two different magnates whose expectations I have met, so even though I met all three, I can only take two barrels. I choose to take one from Bruno and one from Carolina. These barrels will come in useful later when I want to sell or export. And finally, step five, I discard the wine tile. So to summarize, gain fair points equal to the value of the wine, choose a booth and get the bonus, discard expert tiles to gain more fair points, take barrels if you impress the magnates, and discard the wine. After both action steps have been performed in a round, it's time to perform maintenance. This step is very simple. Each player must take back one of their barrels from the sales area if they have one. Thematically, this represents that the hotel or restaurant that you sold your wine to has run out of their supply and needs more. The last step in each round is production, where you use your estates to make wine. At the start of production, you must move to the right any wine you currently have. And if there's no space for it, you have to discard it, which is why cellars are useful. Then you can redistribute your workers, noting that each vineyard can only have one farmer and each winery can only have one enologist. Then for each of your estates that has a vineyard, calculate the quality of wine produced. The quality of wine is determined as follows. Two points for each vineyard, one point for each farmer, one point for each winery, two points for each enologist, and then between minus two and plus two, depending on the weather for the current year, which is depicted on the vintage tile. If the end quality is zero, you haven't managed to harvest enough good quality grapes and you don't produce any wine on that estate. For example, the current vintage tile shows a plus one. In this estate, I produce a red wine of value six, two from the vineyard, one from the winery, two from the enologist, and then plus one because of the weather. Here I produce white wine of value five, two from each vineyard and plus one from the weather. On this estate, I get a red wine of value four, two from the vineyard, one from the farmer and one from the weather. And on this estate, I don't produce any wine, even though I have a winery. It probably wasn't the smartest thing to do to build that winery there and then not also build a vineyard. At the end of rounds three, five and six, there's a wine tasting fair where all players have the chance to score additional victory points. At the fair, each player must present one of their wines, but you may have already done this by choosing the press release action earlier. If you haven't, then you get to do it now as a last minute press release. Entering a wine at the last minute follows the same five steps as I explained earlier. Now the fair starts and follows these three steps. First of all, victory points are awarded based on the position of the markers on the fair track, with the player in the lead getting nine points, second place six, third place three. If you're playing with four players, then the player behind on the fair track gets a free expert tile instead. Also note that the victory points increase at each of the fairs, and most importantly, the markers on the fair track do not reset after a fair. Step two is changing the turn order of the players based on the markers in the booths, with the player in the leftmost booth becoming the new first player and so on. And step three is where all players get to take magnate action tiles from the game board. Now, I haven't actually explained these tiles yet and you do start the game with one of them, but for now, I'm just gonna explain how you get more of them. 
In the new player order, each player can discard any one of their wine tiles to take an action tile and place it face up next to their player board. After all players have done this once, the process repeats with players being able to take a second action tile, and so on. This continues until all players have passed, or all of the tiles have been taken, at which point you discard any remaining action tiles and then refill the spaces with new ones. And at the end of the first and second fair, you can flip back all of your face down expert and action tiles. So now it's time for me to explain how the action tiles work. As I mentioned earlier, you actually start the game with one of these action tiles, and on your turn you may use one of your tiles to get the bonus of it. These are all explained in the reference book, but most of them have got icons that we've already seen. For example, this tile means that I can spend one money to gain one farmer. Using an action tile flips it over, and it only flips back after each of the first two fares. And remember, these action tiles are used on your turn in addition to your normal action. The only restriction is that you may only use one of them each turn. Since I'm talking about action tiles, you may have noticed that when I refilled the area at the end of the fair, some of them were purple. These purple tiles give you extra points at the end of the game, but to take one of them, you must have a spare barrel, and you must place that barrel onto the tile. Again, all of the purple tiles are explained in the reference book. After the third fair, you move the round marker to this space, and all players get one more action. Then, endgame scoring is done as shown here. You score points depending on how much money you have left. All your remaining wine tiles are worth half their quality in points. Then, points are awarded to the players who have the majority of barrels in each of the columns in the export area. And finally, you score points for each of your purple magnate tiles with barrels on. At the end of the game, the player with the most victory points is declared the winner. I hope you found this video useful in learning how to play Vinyos. If you want to see Rado do a demonstration of gameplay, please check out his video by clicking on the link here. And if you like what you've seen in this video, please subscribe to my Gaming Rules channel. Until next time, take care and thanks for watching.